so far on this. What's going on, world? It's your man, Pat Caesar, Caesar LLC, mobile mechanic and roadside services. I'm out here at the shop right now. I got it packed with my dually. I gotta actually pull the tranny out to do some work to it. But uh, I wanted to make this video. This is actually gonna go along with the podcast series. We talk about business financing. Uh, that's the Truth Be Sold podcast, by the way, where we stitch together facts and truth to make common sense commonplace. This is just a little board that I threw together and I wanted to break this down to you. So. Some people ask me, you know, how do you make money in the industry, right? And so this is the thing. Drink my tea. 7.30 in the morning right now. But I needed to get my board back because my kids are waiting to use it. Because I let them play with it. But so your goal, let's just say you want to make a hundred, say a hundred. Say you want to make a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, five thousand dollars, possibly more than that in a month with a service-based business. Or as a solopreneur like myself. Um, so I'm going to particularly talk about the mechanic space, but this basically is widespread for a service-based business. Uh, we're going to come back to your goals because I'll put that in the goals section, all right? So first thing you need is customers, all right? And what, when you talk about customers, you want to know, well, what type of people do I look for and what type of people do I avoid? So we start off, boom, bad customers. What are bad customers? How do you know them? What do you, what do you, what do you, a lot of this is going to be trial and error. But I'm telling y'all from personal experiences that you can make you can make the money. It's really out there. Bad customers leave reviews that are negative. If they leave a review, they won't necessarily leave a positive review. But if you do something bad, they will leave you a review. Much like a credit reporting agency, if you borrow money from someplace and they won't report, like I'm trying to think, maybe Amscot. I don't know if they do it or not. But just say a cash payday advance type of place. They won't report it if you do something good, but they'll report if you do something bad. That's a bad customer, all right? They don't give referrals, because you want to have a customer who's gonna bring people back. Imagine it like a boomerang, or better yet, keep your eye on a sparrow. If the sparrow leaves and you tell it to go get some food, the job of the sparrow is to go out and get the food and bring it back to you. That's what a good customer would do, which would be like the sparrow. They're gonna go out, they're gonna talk, and they're gonna bring people in because of what you've done for them in a positive way. Um, it only comes when their price is cheaper than the others or the competition. That is a bad customer. You don't want somebody who literally only deals with you because of how cheap your prices are because the instant that you raise your prices, you're gonna lose that customer. So the last thing we got here is um, they always want a deal or a discount, but don't have the money to pay. So what you're gonna deal with in the industry, man, and no matter what service-based business you're applying this to, it's gonna be the same thing. If you if you give them a deal one time, they're gonna to wanna to deal again. If you give them a discount one time, they're gonna want it again and again. A lot of the times, the people just don't have the money to pay, and those are the type of people you need to avoid. Now, what's a good customer? A good customer is a repeat customer. A customer that that has quality, it's like a different quality of people monetarily. So I hate to say it, but you know, your lower income, uh, um, lower income people think differently than, than people who make a little bit more money. You know, the higher up you go, the more different you think, and that's henceforth usually why you are getting the money that you're getting. So um, good customers, usually they're high quality, uh, pay a little bit more because they make a little bit more. Um, Typically, they feel valued. Like they, they know that you value them and they value you. It is literally an even exchange type of relationship. You know, one hand fits the other or one glove fits the hand. Whereas when you're dealing with like a bad customer, for instance, they want they want more than they're willing to give. And that's the difference. Like if you if it's gotta be equal, the thing that I'm doing for you has to be of the value of the price that I'm asking for this thing. Okay, uh, they feel that their money uh, uh, was, was good for the particular service that you offer. So that's the same thing I'm saying. You know, service-based business, they just, they're gonna spend with you because they feel that what you're, what you're asking for for that thing is worth it, all right? Uh, value the service you provide. And you know, of course, you know, good customers, they, you know, they, they're looking for honesty, they're, they're looking for integrity, and usually they have those same characteristics, not all the time. So one of those things to get those quality people is you need quality services, 
all right? Guaranteed a warranty. So in the mechanic space, like if I do something, I guarantee it's gonna work for X amount. Sometimes it's six months, sometimes it's 12 months, depending on what, what it is and what product it is. So in my personal practice, I've been implementing not getting things from the parts store as much. Now, I love O'Reilly's, um, that, that's one of my go-to places, but I've ran into a couple issues uh, here in the last few months with some of the products either being defective or breaking prematurely. So I've been opting out of getting parts from the third parties and going straight to the dealership. It costs more money, but then again, you get that quality service. You get that quality part. This is straight from the dealership. And um, you want to make sure you do that because not only is it going to save you time, but it's going to save you further headache because you're, you're getting something that it was it was made for that particular thing and not third party. Uh, it's done before time. If I tell somebody that I'm going to be able to get to something, it's usually, uh, and if I say three days, I'm going to try to get it done in one or two. But I always give myself that buffer so I have time to be able to check the vehicle, to go through everything, to look for any other things that may be wrong that I can clean. Uh, clean, neat, and precise. Now, the clean and neat is a little bit tougher for me because I, I am quite messy, to be completely honest with you. But I am neat when it comes to cars and I am precise when it comes to cars. I like to have it just right because I don't want comebacks on my end. Um, you overdo the service that's expected. To get that quality service, to provide quality service, to get those quality people and the repeat customers, you want to overdo what's expected. So if I tell you that I'm going to wash the car, I'm also going to wash the door jams. You might not think that's a big deal, but you can tell the difference from somebody who who just did the bare minimal to get the job done to, you know, they just did that little bit of extra touch. And some people are going to appreciate it, some people are not, but like I say, the more quality of people that you have, the easier it is to get to that 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 quality service, quality people, and you know, like I say, that one hand washes the other. And you're fairly priced. Now, fairly priced is the hard one to do because in 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 my space, there's always somebody who's willing to do it cheaper. The problem with that is it becomes a race to the bottom because if Joe Blow down the street can do it for, if I say 100, Joe Blow down the street, down, down the street say he'll do it for 80. And then he got a cousin, homeboy, brother, sister, baby, daddy, who would do it for like 65. You know, it, it, it's kind of hard. So then the person who's getting the service done thinks that maybe I'm charging too much, but they're not getting the clean, neat patients on time, done before time, guarantee or the overdue of the service. And that's the extra part that they're paying for, whether or not they actually realize that's what they are paying for. So, uh, got the quality service. And, you know, usually with the quality service and the quality people, that's the repeat customers that you're looking for, you automatically get a quality vehicle. So what does that mean? They haven't rolled the wheels off, rolled the wheels until they actually fell off and tried to put them back on. They've actually pre pre-maintained this thing. It's got maintenance issues that have or that doesn't have maintenance issues that's been neglected for years on end. Um, you know, I am a big, I tell people straight up, look, if the check engine light's on for something stupid, I'm not going to trip on that. But if it's on because, you know, there's a cylinder misfire on light number six, you should probably take care of that. Some people will literally ride, you know what I'm saying, putting it until they can't go no more. And then they want to fix it after they've done all this other catastrophic damage. So, um, you know, to get, you usually get a quality vehicle when you're dealing with quality people. Uh, certified techs have done the work before. So that just means like myself, I have... I think two certifications, but this anybody who's actually gonna stand by their work to give quality service is really what I'm trying to say here. I, I don't care about the paper certificates as much. As long as they know what they're doing, they guarantee their work and they can explain and articulate it to another technician in a fashion that actually makes sense. Has OEM parts reinstalled? So that goes back to the quality service. Like I say, uh, instead of going to the third party part stores, making sure they got OEM parts reinstalled on the vehicle and it doesn't have all the lights on on the dash so you'd be surprised at how many cars i will go to work on tpms light is on hazard light or not hazard lights um you know some malfunction light is on the check engine light is on the 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 airbag light is on, you know what I'm saying? And it's crazy because you would think that you see all these things and they're red flags. Obviously your car's, your car's computer is telling you, hey, there's things going on. And quality people that have quality vehicles don't let those lights go. I mean, they might have one light flash for a second like a TPMS light and freak out about it. But that's different, different people. Somebody like myself, I ain't gonna lie, I'm a little rough around the edges, but then again, I am a mechanic, so 
it doesn't hurt me to see certain things on and I know the difference between importance and not importance but most people don't most people don't care to and henceforth why when you see somebody that doesn't really care about the vehicle they got all the lights on the dash um, you might want to stay away from the people so when you're dealing with this, going hand in hand with the bad customers, man, uh, trigger words that you want to look out for. Yo, I can't pay until. Mm -mm. Leave it alone. Leave them alone. I have someone who can do it for. Mm -hmm. Take it on over there. <laughs> Don't bother me with that. Can you give me a receipt for the parts? That one. Now, that one kind of can go both ways. Most people only ask that because they generally well they're not they generally they want to see what you paid because some people don't like you making money off of them i don't get it i mean i will let you make money off me if there's an equal exchange of what you're making this money off of or what service that you're offering me so i don't get that but yeah that's things to avoid when you hear these things up front that's what you want to do uh what if i get the parts myself that is a, a is a touchy one because at, you know typically i can get a discount on parts now it depends on where I go and what it is. Sometimes I can get a good discount, sometimes I can't get a discount at all. But if the person, when they say, what if I get the parts myself, they typically is a trigger word because to the, pat, the bad customer senses, because they're thinking they're gonna get it for cheaper. They think that it's not gonna be fairly priced or um, they really don't have the money to pay. So what they're trying to do to offset it is to try to find the parts cheapest that they can which goes back to that quality thing that they're not getting them or down here for the college vehicle they're not going to get oem parts reinstalled they're going to go to ebay they're going to go to amazon and there's nothing wrong with those places some of those parts are good but you know sometimes and a lot of times you're not going to get that quality service because you're not getting quality parts installed on the vehicle and i don't like to touch it because they're just obviously trying to save money which i can't be mad at but the liability will fall back on me if that part prematurely fails my uncle brother cousin dad mechanic friend said take it to your uncle brother cousin dad mechanic's friend don't bring it to me if you already got somebody that told you what the deal is and now you're just shopping around for the cheapest price I'm not mad at people who do it, I get it, I just don't try to deal with those types of people, typically myself. So things you are, you know, you need from a customer, you need money, obviously, reviews, referrals, ultimately these things boil down, you need a customer that's happy and that gives, get, uh, appreciates quality service. Those things will bring the money, the reviews, the referrals. And if you want to take it up a notch, get an email address and a phone number. Now, the, like I say again, this is primarily a structure for service-based businesses. This is a structure for service-based businesses to make one, two, three, five K and up a month, depending on what you're actually doing. So your goal, only you can decide what your goal is in this particular sp this field. Like I I'm a solopreneur. I got a mechanic space. I'm actually at my shop right now. I'm just doing this on the back of my truck for aesthetics. I got my Caesar sign, or mechanic sign on my faded square app um, uh, sticker over there. But this is a customer focused business. This is a service based business. So, I mean, ultimately your goal is only what you can decide it is and how much you make, whether it's one, three, five and up is solely based on what you can handle as a person and the service that you offer. So I'm gonna end it on this, because y'all know I also run my towing company, Cesar LLC, Mobile Mechanic and Roadside Services. The reason why I always go back and default to the mechanic space is because there's not every day that somebody breaks down and needs a tow. Somebody needs a tow every day. Let me take that back. Somebody needs a tow every day. They might not call me every day. And with that being said, it's because it, a lot of reasons. They could be too far out of my area. Um, they could have found somebody maybe who was this cheaper. But whatever the case is, as a mechanic, I can kind of schedule out what I'm going to do. And I know things are coming in, whereas the towing and roadside part is kind of hit or miss because I don't know when somebody's going to break down. I don't know when somebody's going to lock the keys in the car or run out of gas. There are a lot of unknowns with it. But the way that I generate money to make these types of numbers, and you know, like I say, it ain't a lie. If you're only making 3K or 1K a month, that's $12,000 a year. But if you're making that as a side hustle, that's pretty good money. So it depends on where you're at. It depends on what you do. Like I said, your goal is ultimately what you decided to be. But here's a list of ways to separate the good and the bad customers and what you need to do to get those repeat customers and start to build and grow your business.
has been a business talk with Pat, man. And uh, you're going to catch this also on the Truth Be Told podcast. And, you know, this is one of those facts and truths. I'm bringing you facts on how you get the money and truths on what my experience is. We're stitching it together and making this common sense that should be commonplace. I appreciate y'all tuning in, man. Tap in with me next time. We're going to go over how to get that bag a little bit more. Until then, be easy. Peace.